Despite many hiccups and heredities, our space program has finally got to the point with funds where it can buy patch conics from the tracking center. Which of course opened our range up to Minmus, and with our love of robots and rovers, I decided that the explore mission should be done entirely by an unmanned mission. Whilst killing time for the transfer maneuver to take place, I was looking through the mission control contracts and discovered a beauty at the bottom that unfortunately would expire way before our probe arrived at the location. So seizing the initiative, I built myself Tonto, the amazing Minman rover. Jeb, being the valuable asset to the space program that he is, decided that he was the person to jump inside the driving seat. A small time later, the unmanned missions performed their robotic destiny to put themselves into a 25 kilometer orbit and land on the surface of the Minman before turning themselves into a wheel. We now rejoin this epic struggle with my landing on Minmus. Or rather, I should say, we are just about to enter the sphere of influence of Minmus. Uh, hi guys, welcome back. I hope you like the, the recappy intro again. I like to throw one in every now and then just to remind people where we're at. And right now we are cruising around with Jebediah. You can see Minmus there in the background, grabbing a few beauty shots before we, before we prepare ourselves ready to get down onto that surface right there. Now the problem is, as you can see from my little trajectory marker there, uh, we are not exactly over the poles, in fact we're not anywhere near the landing site we're going for. And for some reason I think that the best way to deal with this is to uh, circularise myself first and then we'll sort out where's going on here. Now I kind of feel like this might not be the best option, um, but hey, who knows, we'll, we'll see what's going on. But anyway, by tracking around with this little... Um, yellow triangle here and also ever so slightly nudging into the retrograde point i managed to keep my periaps at a reasonable level and also get myself into this beautiful uh, polar orbit here before coming down for a nice low landing or at least putting my periaps down for a nice low landing mainly so that we can go over this southern point here uh, obviously i am mark i'm aiming for these navigation markers i was using the um the probe as a little bit of a marker to, to help me a little bit first but now that we're getting close enough i don't think we need to use that anymore and we can in fact move on to these markers over here and i'm just gonna muck around with my with my trajectory a bit make sure we're flying in the right direction um so hopefully we can get this whilst we're still up in the air i, I was looking at my contracts that are on the right there trying to figure out what we actually need to do to get this particular um navigation marker uh, accomplished what the task is at this place and it turns out it just needed a crew report up at a decent altitude which for me is ideal especially with this little entry uh, entry burn here on the go so our approach trajectory here had left us a little bit high to be able to do the crew report but after falling a little way we got the crew report done and then put all our engine power into making sure we managed to keep uh, not crashing into the surface as kind of was the ideal scenario here once i'm sure we're not gonna plummet and die to our death die to our death yep die to our death i come out to the map view and sort out the new navigation markers do a little bit of tweaking on our engine thrust here because i've realized that the ones on the underside were just a little bit too powerful powerful for Minmus. Uh, I had to be able to try and keep my uh, control. I had to be able to keep control, basically. Uh, anything too strong will just send you flying away, as I'm sure those of you that are familiar with Minmus will be familiar with. Lots of repeated words today, it turns out. Yeah. Anyway, repetitions aside aside, I'm going to look for the top of this uh, plateau in front of us here, because I'm already thinking that maybe, maybe it's time to put our wheels down on the floor. Uh, I don't want to hit it too hard, and I don't really want to be going too fast forward, because that becomes a little bit hard to control, and hitting downwards too hard obviously leads to explosive death which is not an ideal scenario when you're trying to go around and catch all this science catch this science yes um so yeah the reason i'm coming down for a landing is because it, basically it's a lot more fuel efficient like these landing gear they take nothing to run whereas trying to fly and not kill myself that takes constant just constant little um little trimmings here and there keep keep myself pushed up high enough so i'm not slamming into the floor keep myself moving forwards fast enough so that i am actually traveling some direction one of the main problems that i have with moving around minmus is uh sometimes you, you don't want to be going too fast because that can lead to all sorts of oh i'm in orbit type scenarios um but at the same time you don't want to be going so slow that it's taking you forever to get anywhere uh because it takes forever to get anywhere anyway first stunt of the day we put our wheels down and immediately it flips out on me which to me screams you're going too fast uh so i do uh, an immediate and quite heavy 
braking manoeuvre, far too heavy for what was actually needed. Indeed, probably wasted quite a lot of fuel doing that. And then I decided it's time to just like cruise around on the surface of Mimis and IVA for a little bit. Didn't last too long because if you remember, I do have the uh, control issue from IVA mode where it uses Q and E in the in the wrong way round, and it all just gets very very horrible. Uh, but I feel just cruising across the floor like this might get a little bit boring after a while. We didn't really have too many other stunts or stuff at this point, so I'm going to cut forwards a little bit. And all we've done really is driven up that massive hill behind me. Uh, that that is it. That is the sum total of what I did. Uh, as I say, no stunts, no no frivolities, nothing really to worry about. I was just trying to get up here so we could hopefully find this area. This is uh, Sanguine's Al. Uh, was it Sanguine? I think uh, Sig Siggy's, Sig Siggy's Laboratory Alpha, yes. Well, this is where we are. Uh, we need an IVA, uh, an EVA report, IVA report, wow. Uh, and, and that was about it, that's all we needed here. But I am looking over the front of that, of that little ridge in front of me there, and I'm fairly sure there is a big drop on the other side, uh, which to me screams we need to go down there. And thankfully, the Kerbal Gods are in agreement with me. If I check my map view, the marker in, is in front of us for where we need to go. So we just roll forwards a little bit and have a look around. Um, it's not quite the drop I was expecting, unfortunately. Uh, I was kind of hoping that this would actually be a slope leading down onto a section of flats. Uh, and indeed, all it actually is is just a bit of rolling hills. Now, don't get me wrong rolling hills can actually be quite formidable on Mimma, so I didn't approach this with the uh, reckless abandon that I could have. I actually looked at it quite quite strong, strongly and was like, right, how can I deal with this? And now, even even now, it is a bit of an issue. I, I, I entered the, the marker area and I put my brakes on. It wasn't enough. I actually had to end up firing my, my engines to slow myself down, hence that little ducktail thing that I did there. Um, so yeah don't underestimate hills people um i i i have a couple of times and it has led to my my ruin thankfully this time whilst i still did it didn't really come around and bite me all that bad and now uh, you can see i'm being ultra cautious every now and then i'm slamming the brakes on just making sure we don't get up to too high a speed even though we've got quite a distance to go in fact i think we've got to try and go up the other side of the hill a little bit uh so constantly walk going around and checking which engines are on which engines are off uh just really trying to think well just trying to keep my situational awareness up because more than once with this design of craft not with this particular craft but with the alone ranger uh, i thought i was on one set of engines when i was actually on another and this has led to to problems as i'm sure you can imagine but here we go we've made our way to our third point in this area and that was quite nice actually having this uh th group of three points in in quite a local area like two evas and a uh, what was the other one and a surface sample which I thought were uh, it was an amazing little group to have and then there was two crew reports elsewhere yeah no uh, this was really nice it, it gave me a nice mission profile to stick with anyway the marker is on the other side that we need to get to but you'll see off to the north of me there we've got these giant flats that I need to cross and the situation has presented itself where we can go down one of these giant slopes, which is amazing. Like this giant slope right here. That is exactly what I wanted to go for. Uh, after the disappointment of last time, I did zoom out just to make sure that this was indeed a giant slope. And I think that maybe, just maybe, this is uh, ripe for IVA mode. Uh, have a quick look around to make sure that Jeb is all prepared uh, and of course why wouldn't he be he is Jeb uh, and as we crest this bridge we can see there the flatness that we are headed for this is obviously one of the smaller flats here the great flats are over two sets of hills from this point but that's all fine what we've got to watch out for right now is this downwards descent you will see that already I had a little bit of an off kilter swerve um, Thankfully, I could like apply my translational abilities to my brain and like use the right keys to make sure that we didn't end up tipping over here. I thought there was going to be a real issue in this IVA mode was tipping over, but thankfully we made it all the way down. Uh, one thing I forgot to point out was was how the rate that my uh, altimeter was dropping. It was like ridiculous. Go back and watch that bit. Like right now, press the back button a couple of times, like the backwards button on your keyboard, and uh, you will see like the, the the altimeter was just dropping. Uh, okay, so this here is now showing you a problem that I have with trying to steer on the flats. Now, obviously, my trajectory is going forwards, and there's only so many degrees you can deviate from that trajectory before your wheels bite into the floor and start tipping you round, because, hey, that, that's how physics works, right? So 
whilst doing this particular maneuver which was done merely for convenience so uh, this this particular flat here was a little bit small to go over um so i decided to push myself up into this suborbital arc and i'm like mm, maybe just maybe i could put myself into an orbital trajectory here nah i think i'm gonna hit the floor instead that that was much more much funnier much funner i suppose is the term to be used here I, i'm not sure if there, there's a, a funnest word to be used or anything like that but yeah anyway we, we make it over some little hills and remember that i thought maybe we should be going into a uh, into an orbital trajectory there we will come back to that that particular point but here we go we are now on to the great flats which is actually quite hard to navigate your way across here. Um, obviously, with the flats being quite as large as they are, we can't see any mountains in the distance, so it's almost impossible for me to grab a bearing on where I'm going. Uh, and I just kind of have to go from the nav ball, which isn't the best one in the world. It really does have to be said, because you can't really figure out where you're going from north, south, east, and west if you don't know exactly where you are. And I would like to show you the boobies of Minmus. Uh, I, I thought that was hilarious. I should have made a screenshot of it. Anyway, so we're going to go across the the flats here and it, it gets um pretty repetitive at this point so i think we're gonna go jump forwards a little bit to my first major navigational hazard so you'll see there we've got all these hills in front of us and i actually want to be going to the right of those particular hills so i'm gonna give myself just little shoves to the side and occasionally have to do uh, a full 360 there the main problem being that uh, we are trying to turn ourselves quite a lot um and there's nothing quite as efficient shall we say that nothing quite turns you around the corner as well as rocket engines do, do trying to use the landing gear got a little bit risky when i when i done those uh, two or three 360s there, i was like well you know what i'm gonna have, just have to use my rockets and hope for the best um and the same scenario is going to happen at the other side of this hill the main problem being that i want to turn left round the side of this hill like i was pointing in the direction i was for a reason and those hills just happened to be in the way uh and we need i wanted to follow the flats along because well they were flat for starters and you, as you can see by the the design of this vessel uh, it works a lot better on flat surfaces if i'm going up and down hills or it, more importantly if i am on a slope left to right things do get very awkward at trying to keep myself upright uh, mainly because upright is no longer upright it's like 45 degrees to the upright uh, and trying to bear that in mind whilst looking at the nav ball whilst sounds fairly easy um, in theory is actually quite difficult okay so a few more stunts and some of them really do get out of hand uh, thankfully i managed to kind of not save myself yeah it was a, li a little bit a little bit rubbish there so we, we revert and i'm like oh no oh no my last quick save was all the way at the other side of the flats now if only there was some sort of plan in place if only some thoughts had come to me before now about how else i could do this that didn't involve uh, i think it was like two hours driving across the flats we are at like triple speed here no no sorry we're at six times speed here so like it this this took me a while and i was like no i'm not doing this again time for something else time for an orbit but of course not just any orbit will do we want to make sure that we are like ultra low to the surface here we want to be as close to the surface as we can be uh as our crew report needs to be taken now it says above 3600 meters which is you know quite a height to be at but that also to me screams that it needs to be relatively low for us to still be within the sort of uh the, the surface zone for the uh, for the crew report i think i don't know i don't it, it, anyway it was an interesting challenge to try and keep myself down as close to the surface as possible and still achieve quite a beautiful orbit like this this is the sort of maneuver that just would not have been possible without my training on the curb leg so once again thank you very much for setting that challenge in it's really like taught me a lot many more takeaway techniques in there than i thought there would be uh, my next challenge was of course trying to make sure my trajectory went over the navigation marker whilst at the same time trying to take into account the spin of the planet all these things just kind of have to happen at, the, at, at all points across this this mission but obviously it all worked out okay because here we are in engineer shadow and managed to get the crew report done so now we've got to try and think about how we're getting home and as it happens Kerbin's like right there and all i really need to do is make sure that my exit trajectory from minmus is aligned with the uh, retrograde of minmus if that makes sense so with the, the, the way minmus is orbiting around kerbin i need to make sure that i am firing out from minmus in the opposite direction like that that should be easy enough right oh, i thought it should be easy enough anyway um and for some reason notice this i changed my engines round i went from from the the, the backwards ones to the upwards ones um 
and I don't know why. And I'm, I'm, I'm really confused about that. I'm, like really confused about that because when it comes up in a few minutes' time, I completely forget that I did that. Uh, I, I, looking back at the footage, I can see why I did that. It was to try and get over the top of that little particular high plateau there, uh, and I forgot to change it back. So it turns out, well, mystery solved today. Uh, I know it wasn't a mystery for you guys, but it was for me at the time, and I feel a lot a lot better about myself for knowing why this happened now. Uh, this is half the reason why I really do enjoy doing these videos. I get to go back and see all the silly mistakes I made and why they were. And this here is what, the point of confusion. I'm like, why is this orbit doing this? Oh, of course, it's pushing down the underneath. Uh, so exit trajectory going a little bit weird here but we're, we're gonna go with it and indeed there we go that's good enough we've got our exit and for some reason this look look at this weirdly eccentric orbit i've managed to put out there so obviously we're pointing in a bit of a weird direction for what we want to be so we're just going to wait for us to leave the sphere of influence here and now seems like the best time to be uh dealing with my return trajectory uh, i have found this quite a lot coming back from the moon or from minmus uh, i just need to make sure that my ejection burn gets out there somewhere and then don't try and mess with it too much because inevitably you are pointed in not quite the direction that you are think you are pointed or at least i have found that this is the case uh yeah and uh, you end up doing all sorts of weird stuff so here we go rushing our way down to the atmosphere uh trying to get a landing i don't know just just somewhere nice um now as it turns out i'd folded my solar panels away for this this was a very good idea because right now they would have got ripped off but it means that during this uh entry into the atmosphere i have absolutely zero control uh, so we're just going to let ourselves tumble around jebediah absolutely loving it as he does with every roller coaster road of a mission roller coaster ride was what i meant to say there uh, and we've actually come back up and out the top of the atmosphere which was not what we wanted to do at all so i'm going to use what remaining fuel i've got here to try and put myself um well first change my trajectory inclination to get myself up to the to the space center there just like that brilliant uh, and now the problem that i've got here is that was my apple apps over the top of the space center which is not what we want at all so i'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we land somewhere around the the space center i mean we're, we're in a rover it would be nice if we could just land somewhere close enough and then just kind of drive our way over there i mean wouldn't that be great now i thought we were kind of land a lot further along than we are i mean i know the atmosphere pays a lot into the drag model but i was coming down very steep anyway i i, I don't see how there was all that much forward velocity to shear off but obviously there was we are very close to the mountains and we are oh i don't know quite away from the space center i can't actually see how far away we are from the space center so i start rolling forwards and almost immediately click that i've not done a quick save so we're going to spend a little bit of time slowly rolling to a stop i don't want to um use any braking power here because i've just used a some of my tiny amount of fuel to get rolling and we're now going downhill so using my brakes here i feel would be not just inefficient but almost criminal and we're just going to spend some time chilling with jeb i mean we, we want to try and get as close as possible i still have no idea whether it's worth doing this like rolling myself as close as possible to try and get that extra percentage or whether i would have earned more money just taking the fuel back at the 80 odd percent that we would have got back there i don't know mysteries of kerbal anyway it's time for a quick save now we're going to waste all our fuel um and i tell you what i think i'm going to uh save us a long journey here by with a bit of a cut unfortunately i didn't quite make it that's terrible right okay so we're gonna uh revert not revert we're gonna recover right here and whilst we make our way back to the space center i'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure i will see you next time when we're actually gonna get the alone ranger off the mon bye